Hi guys, Sarah here with Easy Adapted PE, and today I want to talk to you guys about annual review reports. So, as Adapted PE teachers here in New York, we are seen as a program, not a service. And that might be different depending on where you are around the country, around the world, but here we are a program. So one of the things that we are required to do is to create an annual review report. Now within that report, we have lots of different pieces that I'm gonna go through with you today so that you can kind of see how I write mine, what kind of information I put into mine, and it's something that maybe you can use for your annual reviews. This is great to share with parents, with special ed departments, with your team. Uh, before we get in that, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below and I'm happy to help you guys out. So let's get right into it. All right, so this is typically what my annual review report will look like. At the top, like right up here above these words, you're going to want to put in your school logo, so whatever that might be. I'm going to put the title of the report. So for this one, it's an annual review summary. If it was one of the first times that I was testing a student, then this name up here would absolutely change to something different depending on what it is that I'm doing and what report that I'm writing. I always put the student's name, the building, because I travel between different buildings, the grade of the student, their date of birth, the provider, which is typically myself, and then the date of the report. So all of those things are super important to be in there. The next thing you wanna do is the background of that student. So typically you can find this information in their IEP, but it's a short narrative, three or four sentences. It might be that the student is receiving adapted physical education, OT, PT, speech, uh, all of those different pieces you're going to want to put into this part. I also might put something about what their diagnosis is, so whether they are a student with autism, a student with Down syndrome, or maybe they are categorized as having an other health impairment, whatever it is that that is in that IEP, you're just going to put it into this background section. The next thing is observation. So really in this section, I'm putting everything that I have seen, their strengths, their skills, uh, the development of that student, their needs, things that need to improve. You're going to enter this information into the physical section on the IEP. So it kind of just gets reset in the IEP in that physical section part. Um, so their skills, their strengths, and all of those different pieces are going right from these observations into that part of the IEP. The best part is these observations are not something that I'm making up off the top of my head. This is something that I've been working on all year long because I've been using my Google Forms to collect data on their skills. And this way, that little narrative piece in the Google Form now can just get copy and pasted into my observations. And I might update it if the student has progressed a little bit, but I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. The next, next thing is the progress towards their goals. So whatever their goal is this year, the current year, you're gonna write that goal out and then you're gonna summarize that data or that progress. Here is a great spot for you to put those charts in from those Google Forms to either show the progress or to show where they are at right now in that goal. The next thing is the summary. So you're gonna add a little bit of summary of a, a basically a narrative about the student's strengths and needs connected to their disability in relation to their participation in general phys ed. So that's basically saying the student you know, is, is doing a wonderful job, but they're continuing to require some modifications, adaptations to the general physical education curriculum in order to be successful. And then lastly is your recommendation. So right in here, you're just gonna put about what what you feel that student needs. The student is going to thrive in, a, in an integrated setting. I'm recommending based on their skills, based on their progress towards their goals, a non-integrated setting. You know, it all depends on that student and what it is you think will work best for them. And everything must align with their goals. So for example, if your goal for the student is to get the student to learn how to skip, then somewhere in this report, you are reporting on their skipping and how they're not able to maybe have that rhythmic pattern three or four times with a step, hop, step, hop. That needs to be documented within this report and within the IEP so that when you go to input that goal, it makes sense and it's all flowing together. So at the end, I'm just gonna sign my name and I am going to put the date and that is it. That is the whole enchilada. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I hope everyone enjoyed seeing this and I will talk to you soon. Thanks, bye.